All right. Thank you. Hey folks, welcome to another video. Today we're checking out the entire Vitra Pro ecosystem, starting with the feature Vitra Pro XR glasses. Now these glasses, the Pro Mobile Dock and the Pro Controller were all provided to me by the folks at Vitra for review purposes. So I just want to mention that before we get started. These glasses I've had for a couple of months now and I wanted to give a careful evaluation because I've got a lot of the glasses that do this type of display purpose where you've got a giant 1080p display in front of your eyes. Uh, I'm actually in a conference room right now and there's a giant screen right in front of me. Uh, that screen is actually smaller than what you'd see in these glasses or similar glasses. But I like these ones for a specific purpose. They have, at least as of right now, the end of September 2024, the best clarity and the best brightness and the best color palette available among these glasses. They also have diopters, so I don't need to wear my prescription glasses. Usually, I wear these underneath these types of display glasses. And with these ones, I don't have to do that. They also offer electrochromic dimming. So when I'm using the glasses plugged in with this magnetic cable right here to a device, they'll automatically dim. So this right here is the Vitra Pro Mobile Dock. And it's very cool because you can connect a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck or another device, and this will actually power it as a battery bank as well as allow you to connect two sets of glasses. So my wife and I actually have played some Super Mario Wonder and other games using this particular device, using two sets of glasses so that we both have our own displays. It's really cool. And I have another video that you can see that shows that off. The Vitra Pro Controller, I have some mixed emotions over. It works really well with this device, the Vitra Neckband, which connects to the glasses using this magnetic cable right here and then you'd get the display. And the controller helps to navigate menus and do most of the actions to enter into applications. So if you're using it to view content, for example, there are these little buttons on the side that are extremely hard to navigate with on the neckband itself that the controller really helps to solve for. When you're connected to a Nintendo Switch, this controller works really well because it functions as a Switch Pro controller. But when you connect it to other devices, like if I wanted to use it with a standard Android device or a PC, that's where it gets a little bit clunky because it really functions as a Switch Pro controller. Uh, this is a very, very nice, very well-built controller by the folks at 8-Bit Do in collaboration with Vitra. So it's got the color scheme, the orange and black color scheme of the glasses. And it will work well with Steam with certain games where you can actually map controls to the specific controller that you're using. But if you're trying to play like Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation games or things of that nature, this is not going to work for that, at least not right out of the gate. I don't know if there are drivers or things that you can use to improve this functionality, but unfortunately, this is really, like I said, meant for the neckband or for a Nintendo Switch. Bonus, if you have games that can support this with Steam input. I have a video where I use these glasses with this exact controller playing What the Car, a fantastic game on Steam. And that's pretty much the ecosystem. You've got the neckband, uh, which has actually been around for a while, uh, and it's what drew me into the Vitra ecosystem because it's an all-in-one Android TV style device that connects directly to the glasses and can also power the glasses. It's got a battery built inside. And then you've got the controller to navigate within the neckband or for Switch or for playing other types of games, like I mentioned. And you've got the battery bank slash mobile dock here to connect to devices like the Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck and then share. The display in the glasses is phenomenal. It's strange because it uses the same type of display as competing glasses from Xreal and Rokid, but something in the software, something that they've enabled allows it to be a bit brighter and the folks at Vitra actually give you the option of many different color palettes that you can actually adjust using a button combination on the glasses themselves. They're constantly updating the firmware. 
they're constantly updating the different builds of Spacewalker, their application for Macintosh, PC, iOS, and Android. The iOS version has a bit more functionality available to it uh, than the Android version, for example. They've added web apps that you can launch for things like Netflix and Apple TV and things of that nature. Uh, the Android one's a little bit further behind. And like I said, web apps, not full applications, so you're actually still launching a web browser, not launching into the applications themselves. Uh, the competition, the folks at Xreal have the Xreal Beam Pro, which actually allows you to open 2D and 3D applications that are directly opening within their Nebula OS interface. Um, that is a little bit different. Uh, Xreal's standard Android operating system, which is called Nebula, is very similar to Spacewalker, um, and it is compatible with Xreal's glasses. I don't have a pair of the Rokit glasses, but I'm assuming that their application is going to be similar where it's opening web applications on a standard Android device or an iOS device. And the reason for that is because these types of glasses are not made by Apple or Samsung or the phone manufacturers. So those phone manufacturers want to have some control. The telecommunications companies that the phones are carried by also want to have some controls. So the reason why the Nebula OS on the Xreal Beam Pro works is because that device is actually operated by Xreal as a Wi-Fi device or as a 5G connected data device with no phone carrier and no other company to answer to. I imagine that in the future, Vitra may have a similar solution as well. So I'm excited to see if something like that comes out. The drawbacks that I would say I have with these glasses are somewhat minimal, but also there, there are some things that I can't do with these glasses that I can with similar glasses. Uh, one is they're a little bit less comfortable than my Xreal Air 2 glasses. So for daily use, yes, I can use them, um, but I start to get some pinch right here uh, above my ears, um, which I don't get with the Xreal glasses. I will say though, I don't have to wear any type of prescription lens adapter underneath these because the diopters work for my particular prescription. So there's a little trade-off in the comfort there and that they work pretty well that way. On the Xreal Air glasses, there's a little pivot here on the arms of the glasses that allows you to adjust so that you can get the screens perfectly lined up on your eyes. Uh, with the Vitra glasses, I kind of have to move them up and down my nose bridge to get to the picture uh, in a clear space. It still works, but it's a little bit clunky um, and it's not as elegant of a solution. Uh, these glasses are very rigid, so like I said, get a little bit of discomfort above my ears. Uh, the nose bridge has been very comfortable for my particular nose, but I've seen some complaints about the nose bridge on these glasses from others. Others have said that they see some fog or blurriness on the sides of the lenses. I have not seen that at all with my pair of these glasses, but I can say with competitor glasses from, from the Xreal Air series, I've also not seen any of that blurriness that others have reported. So that could be down to your inner pupillary distance, uh, which is something that none of these manufacturers have really solved for as of yet. Uh, but from a clarity perspective, from a brightness perspective, from a vividness perspective, I feel like the video display in these glasses, at least as of right now, is the best amongst the glasses that I currently own. However, if I'm using them for productivity, if I'm trying to take conference calls, if I'm trying to do anything that would require speaking, that's where there's a challenge. My Xreal glasses have a microphone or an array of microphones, depending on which glasses, built into the glasses themselves. So I'm able to actually speak on those calls and it'll be directly connected. If I'm using a translation application, I can use that application and it'll pick up through the microphone in the glasses naturally. With the Vitra glasses, it's gonna depend on the source that you're connected to, to have a microphone. So if you're connected to a mobile device, it's gonna use that mobile device's microphone. If you're connected to a PC or Mac, it's gonna be using the Mac or PC's microphone if they have one. 
Uh, I'd really like for a future Vitcher glasses model to actually have integrated microphones because it kind of gives a more all-in-one purpose to these glasses as opposed to just being a display. The other thing that these don't do super well is what they call 3DOF or three degrees of freedom. Uh, with the x real glasses, it's a very smooth transition. Like you can lock something in place, move your head, and it works really well on mobile devices as well as on PC and Mac. Uh, with the Vitra glasses, it works pretty well on Macintosh and PC, um, but it's almost artificial. Uh, it, if I look up and down, it doesn't really do all that much. Um, side to side works pretty well but there's a little bit of a jitter. Uh, I hope that, again, that that is solved for in either future iteration of the hardware or their continued revisions to the software because uh, I feel like Vitcher is definitely neck and neck right now with Xreal as far as their product line um, in quality. Uh, and while I feel like the hardware build for the Xreal glasses might be just slightly more comfortable. Uh, they're both pretty durable and they both work very well. So I'm going to show off a really cool feature here using the Macintosh. I'm just going to connect directly using this cable to the Vitra XR glasses. Uh, these glasses actually can run at 60 hertz, 90 hertz, or 120 hertz when connected to another device. The original Vitra 1 are locked to 60 hertz, so that's an improvement in the hardware for these glasses, as well as the brighter, more vivid displays, uh, the different color palettes being able to adjust it. And there are several other things that, as time goes on, I feel like these glasses are gonna be the ones to get. So if you're looking at the Vitra line of glasses, the Vitra 1, a little bit less expensive, slightly more limited. The Vitra 1 Lite, uh, do not have the electrochromic dimming, which you can see happening right now. I'm launching into their Spacewalker application right now, and now I've got three screens in front of me. And if I look down, it actually undims the glasses, so I can see the keyboard to type. And that is genius. Like, if I look up, it dims. If I look down, I can type. That's something that competitor glasses do not do at all. And I think that's a one-up for productivity when you're using a PC or Mac. Again, you're limited to the microphone source of the device that you're using and not something that's built into the glasses. I'd hope that that happens in a future iteration of the glasses. But you can't deny, like, I don't have to search for keys if I don't know the keyboard and I'm not familiar with it. I can just look down, type. It's perfect. It works really well, and it's one of my favorite kind of hidden features because this only really happens when you're using a Macintosh or a PC within the glasses. So something pretty cool that you can do. All in, the full ecosystem for these glasses and all of these accessories is around between $800 and $900. Uh, as of right now, I'd say you can probably skip the neckband. Uh, it feels a little outdated when compared to just plugging into an iOS device or an Android device if you have those available. If you have no device available, uh, the neckband is decent, but it requires some hoops to be jumped through where it feels kind of like you're unofficially being supported by Google. You're side-loading Google apps and things of that nature. That's the thing that I would definitely uh, not pick up as an accessory unless you really need it. The convenience of having a neckband around your neck to play things like PlayStation and Xbox games is really cool, but you're also going to need an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller because unfortunately, the Pro controller here is really designed for Nintendo Switch or just navigating the menu structure and things of that nature. Uh, if you have a Nintendo Switch, this is a great buy as a Pro controller. If you have Steam, it works pretty well with some games with Steam input. Uh, but the controller itself, again, an accessory you could probably pass on. If you have a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck, this mobile Pro Dock is really cool. Even if you don't, if you want to have two pairs of glasses showing off the same video source, this is really good. So if you have something that you can connect via USB-C that has video out over USB-C, or if you have the adapters to make something output, 
video over USB-C. You can watch 3D or 2D movies together. You can play games together using two sets of glasses. So if you have a player one and a player two in your household, this is definitely something I would recommend picking up with the glasses. All told though, these are a great set of display glasses at the current time. Uh, they don't have a lot of, or really any augmented reality uh, specifications unless you connect to something to get multiple displays. And when you're connecting to get multiple displays on a PC or Mac, these are probably the best quality that you're gonna get. I have a video that shows off the older Vitcher 1 using the Macintosh so you can see how the Space Walker software works and gives you three virtual displays or two virtual displays or a large widescreen display. And it works really well. Um, so if you're using with a PC or Mac, these glasses are fantastic. If you're just trying to consume content, they have extremely good displays. But if you're trying to do things like walk around and take conference calls or uh, do things that require communication, whether it be video calls or regular calls, they don't have a microphone and there's usually gonna be better options whether you're using Rokid or Xreal to get that microphone uh, audio from the glasses themselves near your mouth as opposed to wherever your device is. Um, if you're looking for all day comfort, I feel like at least for my face structure, my head, the Xreal glasses are a little bit more comfortable, particularly the Air 2 series. Uh, but as an all around entertainment device, I don't think you can go wrong picking up the Vitra Pro glasses. The glasses themselves are available at vitra.com or on Amazon for $459. A little bit pricey, but definitely a good quality set of displays in front of your eyes. Large display, bigger than, like I said, a giant TV in a conference room. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR, AR, or consume some content on glasses like these. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.